Welcome back everybody. Another day in paradise. So I'm uh, obviously going to be removing this rock pile. And Henry is busy doing gypsum. He's just greasing up the, uh, the spreader this morning. And then he'll be cracking into it. So yeah, he's got plenty to go on to there. I've got plenty to go on to here and uh, I've uh, also got to go to town for a meeting uh, so I'll be only working for about an hour and a half and I've got to go and then hopefully I can get some work in this afternoon and keep finishing up this rock pile. I'm actually not here tomorrow either, I've got my ute getting serviced in town, actually I need to check it, I needed to get some parts so I just need to make sure of that. Uh, and then Thursday, Friday, uh, 41 and 43 degrees. And Henry is in town, I believe, on Friday. He's got a dentist appointment and something else. So uh, I might even jump on the spreader, but I might not. We'll see, just with uh, that sort of temperature. Yeah, I probably won't be uh, driving in paddocks or doing any rock picking or anything like that in that sort of weather just to uh, reduce our risk of a, uh, a fire. So we'll, uh, we'll just play, play it by ear how the, uh, how the week's gonna progress. Got a, uh, a nice full truck there. So let's see if we can uh, not get bogged on the last pile that we're going to be dropping over on that pile there. The truck will then face the other way because I've got to go out on the road and all the way back to the workshop to dump my uh, the rest of it where I'm going to be dumping. Uh, but yeah, so once I've dumped this load down there, I'll probably take the loader down and just push all the rocks in because like I said in the last video, I'm not going in as far as what Henry was, um, which is good because it means I'm not getting bogged but it's bad because now I've got to push all the rocks in and then while I'm there there's that other small tiny rock pile that should be about three bucket loads that we'll uh, also go and get as well and uh, just transport that down to that rock pile there and uh, get that all sorted before I forget about it all right shouldn't get bogged uh, I'm gonna put you on the uh, angle again Right, so tip this off and pull out, no worries, not getting bogged. And then I'll come down and uh, sort it all out with the loader. getting bogged and that annoying sound is diff lock so uh, let's just go and close the tailgate show you why we're slipping and then hopefully we can get out so we're slipping because here is where I've been turning like I said uh, in the last video turning is going to be tearing it all up and making a mess and uh, yeah that's why you st I started bunny hopping so I stopped I'm lowering that down so my weight is now even. It's not all at the back, so it's not pulling the truck. And uh, I should be right just to pull out. So I'll just put the tailgate up and then we'll take off. Okay, time for the annoying sound. Putting the, uh, the diff lock on. So it locks all my diffs, means that all the wheels are gonna be spinning instead of just one side. And just like that, we come out of it. So like I was saying, with the weight back like that with the trailer, it's lifting, essentially lifting the, uh, the truck. So once you put the weight back down, you should be able to get out. And uh, like you saw then, I did. Truck is loaded and ready to go. The pile is getting a lot smaller now. I reckon there'll only be maybe three truck loads left in that. Be nice. Now I'm just gonna head down to here and push in the rocks. Uh, so they are off the edge of the crop. You can see the crop edge, put the bucket down. You can see the crop edge goes along here. These ones are fine. These first two, or three, yeah, the first two that I did are, so I'm just gonna push them in, because uh, these ones are, yeah, they're fine. 
Henry's ones are definitely fine. They're way, way in. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to push these off because if the cedar doesn't hit them, it'll be the header that does because obviously the header hangs a little wider than what the uh, you know the road that it cuts. So I just want to get it off the off the crop edge just to prevent damage from ever occurring. And that's all I've done. Just four pushes and you can see that this is the edge of the stubble line here and it's way in. So that will uh, that will have that all sorted and safe. Now I'm just, like I said, I'm gonna go to this other one. I really need to remember to grab a uh, the suction cup now whenever I'm working in the loader. There's nothing magnetic in here to go onto. So I've got the poles that are, and uh, this is, but you can't see anything from down there. So I'm trying to use the speaker, but the speaker obviously isn't all that magnetic and it's not going great to do that. And uh, it just keeps on wobbling too much. So I uh, apologize for no in-cab footage, but well, not much in-cab footage. So the advantage of doing this one compared to the one I did in the last video is I'm actually going to be driving down a tram line. I'm not going to be naughty and driving across, uh, which is very nice because uh, yeah, it'll probably be probably about five buckets, let's be honest, once you clean it up properly. Um, so yeah, that's all it is. That's all Dad and I left. I don't know why, but yeah, maybe we forgot about it, didn't see it, who knows, but we'll get it cleaned up now. And that pile has disappeared. So now we'll uh, go and empty off the, uh, the truck at its new location. And I might be able to squeeze another one in before I gotta go to town, but most likely not. I'm thinking of dumping it. That's our old tip just there. That's our new one over there. You can see we've already got a pile there. I'm thinking I might uh, swing around and then reverse all the way up and then dump up there somewhere. And I think I'm only going to do maybe four more loads from there, but then there is a, all those other rock piles, I suppose. So. I think I might be having to find a new spot after this, but <laughs> I'm not sure where to go. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll find something. See how many I can get along here and I guess we'll just keep tipping here until here gets full and then maybe I'll just go right next to it but yeah I'll uh that'll be this afternoon's problem because I need to uh get back to my ute now and head on into town. On the way out of town meeting all wrapped up and done which is uh which was good uh whilst I was in town I also popped in I had to obviously drop off the cover for art that fuel box toolbox cover so I had to drop that off to them and uh, while I was there I went in and saw the tractor so here's a photo of it just here and yeah no very exciting to see it uh, it was uh, yeah it was red it was sitting in there ready to roll there it's the next one in line to be PD'd and then once it's been PD'd they'll do all the uh, the Topcon stuff and then the John Deere stuff uh, it currently hasn't got a bonnet at the moment because uh, in transport it obviously got a ding or something so that's off getting painted and uh, yeah, no, very excited. Uh, hopefully it's not too long and that'll be out on farm. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So uh, whilst I was always also in town, uh, I went around to uh, Farm in General and a few other shops, was uh, trying to find some pumps for this new firefighter. I, uh, I want uh, a decent sized pump, like I'm looking at 20 litres a second or 1200 litres a minute. 
I want something that's going to push the water, do a massive, uh, just, I want to make the best firefight possible. With that, you need water pump that's going to absolutely pump the water. I've got the water behind me. We're going to have 11, 11 and a half thousand litres. So there's no issue there. And uh, yeah, so I've done a few quotes online um, going for just an all-in-one unit. So just like the ones that are on the back of the brigade trucks. Uh, so big diesel big diesel pumps. Now the only issue with that is you're looking at anywhere from about twelve to $16,000, which is just too much money. It's just ridiculous. Uh, you wonder, you know how these, uh, these trucks get uh, are, are worth so much money when they come out to us when their pump is worth 16 grand on the back. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I've, uh, I've put out some feelers trying to find either a water pump that will do the job that I require or uh, like I said in an in a earlier video, we have that stalker that we had on our old fire unit and uh, what I need to is replace that Perkins that's on the back there because that's, that's a crap motor, it's horrible. I don't want it, it's too big and cumbersome. Uh, and hopefully I can get a, uh, a 50 horsepower inline motor that can go on that and I'll just direct drive it off that with that silent rubber coupling. So they're gonna look into that for me as well. Ideally that would be the best situation if I could use that. I've already got that on farm, I know that pump's good. Uh, yeah, so that, that, that would be my, my first go-to. Uh, just need to just need to find out if they can do it. 50 horsepower. It's a it's a big motor. It does, you say 50 horsepower, you think oh it's not that big, but uh, it's you, you're getting in the size of small small engines. You got the uh, the 40 horsepower as high as the petrol ones go for things like uh, augers and like the vanguards, for instance. But yeah, as soon as I don't know what that was. As soon as you uh, get into the 50 horsepower range. It, becomes a bigger motor, obviously a bit more expensive. I'd rather shell out, let's say three grand on a motor that I can direct drive off a pump I've already got, over $16,000. Uh, and then the other thing, I want two good water monitors, so like water cannons, um, and I got a quote for them, and that's five grand for two. So I couldn't believe that. Um, I wanna try and get away from having uh, just soft pipe all, all over the deck and everywhere, I don't like it. It's a tripping hazard. Uh, it also, in the sun, it uh, wears out and if you've got a bending point, you get a hole in it. Uh, just in Izzy, we've had two holes in that. Uh, at the fire, Buxton Day fire, we were fighting a fire, well, fighting the fire with a hole in the hose because we just didn't have time to cut it and uh, change it, uh, you know, just move it up. So we were having to, well, David was on the back and having to hold his hand over that whilst firefighting. Um, or he was just yeah quickly turning it off and on so yeah that's yeah I'll, i want to uh, you know we're doing it i want to do it right i don't want to half-ass the job and have it not all be ideal um so yeah that's uh that's where we are with uh with that back to picking rocks henry's still busy spreading gypsum and uh yeah look i remember to bring out my sticky mount so you guys are in the window now so uh Enjoy, enjoy the view.
much there left to go at all. There is not even a full truck's worth left, which is good. We've uh, gotten through it, and this one uh, was just uh, a whole lot of uh, you know truck loads that were dumped there. Uh, there has been no ground rocks or anything like that in here, but uh, that's pretty uh, pretty spot on with this sort of soil type. The uh, the ground rocks are on that side where uh, where you guys saw in the previous videos with Henry uh, digging them all out. I'm back at the shed for two reasons. Uh, the truck is playing silly buggers on me. Uh, it's revving when it shouldn't. So when I'm driving along, I take my foot off the accelerator. It's still revving. I can't use my engine brakes. And even with the, my foot on the brake, it doesn't drop the engine revs. So something's going on in there. Uh, so I flipped the bonnet up to see. It's an, obviously this is an electric, um, it's an electric pedal. So this is how it gets its, uh, its speed. This plug is all good. Um, Sometimes, you know, when your years of dirt and dust and stuff can uh, corrode those plugs. But that, look, that looks all right. And then, uh, well, the next thing is to have a look on the ECM and, uh, yeah, go from there. But that's just, I'm not getting in there. <laughs> Pipes go on everywhere. The plug I probably need is on the back, which I can't get to. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna, gonna leave that for now. What I am gonna try, I gave Brian a call because this is Brian's old truck, for those who don't know. And uh, he's never had this issue happen before, but uh, we're sort of gonna go with, like we do have the cruise control switch on. Now we just leave that on because you sort of forget to turn it off after driving. I haven't been using the cruise control, but we're just gonna turn that off, see if that works, because it might be, you know, all the gravel, the dust, everything. It could be short circuiting, so a wire somewhere and turning the cruise control on, which obviously then the uh, the jakes won't work off that. But uh, I mean, the brake should turn it off, but who knows, who knows with wiring issues. So we'll see how that goes. If it all goes wrong, I'll uh, call a Detroit diesel guy in town and see what he reckons and see if he can come out and fix it if it's something I can't do. Now I'm also back because I need to get Bill, because I've only got, uh, maybe half a truckload out there. Uh, I'm gonna take Bill out and drop it at the next pile so then I can shift my gear around and uh, keep on getting this to a full truckload and then no, I'm not doing big drives with half a truck. So I'm just gonna put the bonnet back down, that plug back in and see how we go. This is the, uh, the next pile we're gonna hit. Uh, well, you can see at some point we've had water and it's gone around the pile and made a, uh, its own little creek anyway. I'm gonna get rid of it. Like I said, I don't like the weeds, I don't like the piles out in the middle of the paddock, so we'll get rid of that one. Now, there is a small one just there, similar to the size of the one that I removed this morning. That one will go, and then there's one between that size and that size up there, and we'll get rid of that. Now, I'm also gonna change my drop point. Instead of going all the way down to the tip there where I was, I'm worried about this sand hill. There's a very sandy hill up the top there that I have to go across. I will get bogged. Uh, so I reckon I'm just gonna go into the next paddock uh, and then drive down to a clump of trees and I'll be dumping it there. It's, um, yeah, we're never gonna demolish those trees. So yeah, it's a good spot to dump them. So uh, I guess I'll show you on the next load when I'm loading, well, going down where I'm gonna dump it. So I'll leave Bill here, go get the truck, finish that pile off and start mosing up here. Now that to me, I reckon is farmer porn. You got like the rock pile removed, the weeds are gone. It's gonna be a nice productive area. Oh, fantastic. I'm gonna dump this uh, half load just up here where I was uh, dumping this morning. I got some room on the other side where I can dump a half load. I've already taken the loader up. Uh, I'm actually at that tiny little pile, so I'm gonna load that first and then we'll go to the big pile and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get roaring. This is the, uh, the clump of trees that we're going to. And uh, yeah, this will be the last load of the day. And then I'll uh, go and pick up Bill and get that back to the shed so it's not out in the paddock. And we'll try again tomorrow. Now tomorrow is uh, also going to be 40. So we've got three days of over 40 degrees. So what I'm going to do first thing tomorrow is move the fire truck up to uh, where Henry's working. Just so that, um, look at this, puts off.
foot's off the accelerator, I was out of gear, and it's just, I have no idea what's going on with this truck, I need to call someone, because it is, uh, it's a pain trying to drive like this, you just can't change gears. Uh, but yes, what was I saying, uh, tomorrow's hot, uh, the, well the next three days are, so we're going to move the fire truck out to where Henry's working. Not that we uh, anticipate anything to go wrong, but we'd just rather be safe than sorry, have that out there in the paddock next to where he's working, and then that way, if for whatever reason, Something did go wrong with the spreader and it started a fire. We've got the truck there ready to roll instead of back at the shed. Right, that's, uh, that's me done for the day and that's the video done. So thank you very much everyone for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.